Hello and welcome to the special SUTV Homecoming pregame show. I'm Lindsay Barna. And I'm Lance Kopp. Thank you for joining us as we prepare you for kickoff between the Westchester Golden Rams and your Shippensburg Red Raiders. Homecoming is always a great week for students filled with events that students can take part in. Tyler Schwinn recaps the festivities of Homecoming Week. Students have always loved Homecoming Week because of the special events being held. This year was no exception. Monday, APB sponsored a candy buffet with many sweet treats for students. Later that night, comedians Dan Sauter and Pete Davidson took the stage. Tuesday, students felt famous with a special celebrity photo shoot. Later that night, students competed in a family feud style game show competing for different prizes. Wednesday featured APB sponsored pretzels. Wednesday night was all about playable fun, which featured different blow up attractions for students to go and play. Thursday was all about relaxing entertainment with APB sponsored stress relievers. Thursday ended with the always popular lip sync competition with students lip syncing to their favorite songs in hopes of taking home the $500 prize. I, I can't sing. So being able to perform in front of a lot of people without actually being able to sing, that's a, that's a good experience for me. The week ended with star cooking decorating on Friday and a spirit rally. The week-long events are put on by the Activities Program Board and the Homecoming Committee. Homecoming week is loaded with fun for students right through the football game. But in the midst of all the fun, a lot of hard work and planning goes into this special weekend. Kyle Jerson takes a closer look. The signs are all around campus. Homecoming 2013 is finally here. Student organizations have been busy getting ready in order to make this year special. This year's theme is Ship, Where Stars Are Born. In the beginning when we chose all of our board members, we voted. Everyone had to come in with ideas and Hollywood was a lot of people's, a lot of different people's ideas. But Homecoming isn't just about fun and games. The charity for this year is the National Multiple Sclerosis Society of Central Pennsylvania. We voted on it and decided it would be the most beneficial. They've been working hard to come up with interesting activities to get as many students involved as possible. We voted on what would, we thought would get the most amount of people out and what would keep students interested and make them come out to all of our events. It was a lot of hard work, but they were able to come up with events they thought the students would like. We have a whole bunch of different people from a bunch of different backgrounds, so if we all liked it, we figured other people have to like it. So come out and enjoy the fun and help make Raider history. Homecoming isn't just about football, it's also about royalty. Students have selected their 2013 King and Queen and they will be presented during halftime. Samantha Stanball has more. At halftime, Seth Grove Stadium will be packed with eager fans waiting to hear the results for the 2013 Homecoming King and Queen. Senior Queen candidate Sarah Mays wants to win because of her support system. I would be super excited to be able to represent the entire university. Mays also believes the homecoming king and queen are about more than the high school version. I wasn't on court in high school, but I know that a lot more work goes into it and it's an entire process, which is really cool. Senior queen candidate Brittany Arnold says the process was not easy. First we had to do voting to get onto court and then fundraising and we had an interview and the interview was worth the most points. Arnold also ran for the title because of her ties to multiple sclerosis. It has affected me and my mom personally, so it hits home. So I think that it's a great fundraiser and it also affects my friends. So stick around for this year's King and Queen. For more information about the candidates running for the title, visit SUTV.com. When we come back, find out what one student organization is doing for the big game. Plus, we'll get a closer look at the offense and defense. But first, new offensive coordinator Joe Davis has big hopes for his team. This will actually be my first homecoming at Chip as a coach. And uh, from what I've heard, it's off the charts. And uh, from the pictures I've seen, from the videos I've seen, uh, it seems to be as good of an atmosphere as there is in Division II. And we really hope that our players will thrive off that on Saturday. Homecoming, it's a time where you know you have a lot of alumni come back, you have your, all your family come here, big crowd, you play in front of, you know, it's, it's going to be a good weekend. Welcome back. If you've been to any Shippensburg athletic events, chances are you've seen, better yet, heard the Red Sea. 
In only its second year, the Red Sea student section is getting bigger and louder every week. The Red Sea started a Facebook event encouraging students to come cheer on the Red Raiders. This weekend, Seth Grove Stadium will be awash with the Red Sea faithful. The Red Raiders are looking for their 13th consecutive win at home. Their last home loss came against Westchester in 2011. The team has given a lot to cheer about lately, and today they are going for their sixth win in a row. Tyler Schwinn has your recap. Looking to rebound from their opening season road losses at Shepherd and Slippery Rock, the Red Raiders look to open strong at home against East Stroudsburg. The Red Raiders started off strong, connecting for a touchdown on their first possession. The Raiders continue to put points on the board as Zach Zuli connects with Trevor Harmon in the back of the end zone. The Raiders would go on to win 41-31. After defeating Millersville on the road, Ship pulled out all the tricks against Seton Hill as Zach Zuli throws the ball to receiver Sheldon Mayer, who stops and throws the ball himself to wide open Karan Kent, who finds the end zone for a first half touchdown. The Raiders continue to run away from Seton Hill behind Blair Brooks, who goes 47 yards for the touchdown. The Raiders would win 73-27. to After a win at Lockhaven, the Raiders' latest test would be against the Golden Bears of Kutztown. Zach Zuli drops back and finds Trevor Harmon in the end zone for a touchdown in the first half. The Raiders would be all smiles as they would go on to beat the Golden Bears 55-30. to For SUTV Sports, I'm Tyler Schwinn. The Red Raiders offense has been a scoring machine this season behind offensive coordinator Joe Davis. They face their toughest test yet when the Golden Rams come to town. Let's take a look at how Zach Zuli and company plan to put points on the board. If you pay attention to Red Raider football, you know you're in for some fireworks. Ship has one of the most explosive offenses Division II has to offer. They have averaged over 40 points a game and above 450 yards of total offense. It all starts with former Harlan Hill Trophy winner Zach Zuli. Zuli keeps defenses off balance with his run-pass threat, accounting for 26 total touchdowns on the season. Combined with a stout offensive line and weapons like Trevor Harmon and Blair Brooks, this group is tough for anybody to stop. But in comes a Golden Rams defense that ranks 19th in Division II, allowing 308 yards per game. Offensive coordinator Joe Davis knows his unit has a big test Saturday, but feels this offense can only stop themselves. And if we're able to protect the football, we'd like to think that our offense will take care of itself. We'll be able to score enough points, we'll be able to move the football as, as we should be able to, uh, but against a great team like Westchester, if you give the football back to them, you're probably going to be in for a long day. There is no doubt the turnover battle will be one of the deciding factors in who comes out on top in this game. We look forward to seeing if the Raiders offense can stick to their offensive game plan against the Rams. Football isn't only about scoring points, it's about keeping opponents off the scoreboard too. The tough Red Raiders defense will have its hands full against the Westchester's ground and pound offense. Let's see what Mike Burkett's unit has in store for the Raiders D. Defensive football is about toughness and physicality, striking fear in opposing offenses. That's the mentality these coaches instill in the Wolf Pack. We've always referred to ourselves as the Wolf Pack, keeping in mind that that you know, it, it, the strength of the, the pack is in the wolf, the strength of the wolf is in the pack. All of the attention has been focused on Ship's offense, but quietly, the defense is one of the better squads in the PSAC Eastern Division. Leading the charge is senior captain defensive end Jake Metz, who has 10 of the team's 27 sacks. Around him is a cohesive unit that plays to the whistle and attacks the football. They face their biggest challenge when all-star running back Rondell White and company try to spoil this year's homecoming. Defensive coordinator Mike Burkett says it's just a matter of the guys doing their jobs. Not a big statistics guy, um, so again, we want to make sure that, that we're able to win the game. Uh, after that, we want to get 11 hats to the football. We want to make sure that they get there in a foul mood and, and do some damage when they arrive. Points on the scoreboard is what matters, and it's up to the Raiders' Wolfpack defense to make sure their rivals don't come out on top come Saturday. For SUTV Sports, I'm Carl Strong. When we come back, head coach Mark Macheski shares some thoughts from his playbook. Plus, our campus Red Raiders sports experts give their picks for the big game. But first, freshman long snapper Chris Fegley explains why this game means so much to him. It means more than 
pretty much a lot of the others. We're going to have a lot of fans. It's going to be pretty exciting. Um, hopefully to kick off a good four-year career here. Homecoming, I mean, that's really the pride right there. That's simple as that. Like, you know, people come out to see what, you know, what our school brings to the table when it comes to the football field. And, you know, we want to give them a show. We want to make them happy. And uh, homecoming is all pride, you know. You don't never want to lose that game. Mark Macheski has enjoyed much success being named head coach in 2010. Our own Carl Strom sat down with the Red Raiders coach to get his perspective on his third homecoming as head coach and the game plan the team must play. All right, Coach, thanks for sitting down with us. Uh, this season, you started out slow at an only two start, but since you've won your last five games, what's been the key to the turnaround? Well, I think uh, one of the big things for us has been just getting used to playing with, with us as a group, uh, you know, the chemistry part of the program and the team. Um, you know, we lost a lot, of, a lot of players from last year, a lot of good quality players who were great leaders. And, uh, you know, this year we had to kind of fill our way through that a little bit in our first two games. Uh, we, I don't know if we were all on the same page as far as coaches, players, players and players or, or whatever. So um, I give a lot of credit for our, our players to come back, find the chemistry, start playing as a team, as a family, and they've done a great job. So, uh, and I think every week we continue to get a little bit better at that. My partner and I were at practice yesterday and we overheard you saying to your players when they were doing their running drills, it's a championship week. Little kids, championship week for you. Let's go. What exactly did you mean by that? If we're going to reach some of our goals and our first goal is to win the PSAC East. If we're going to do that, it goes through Westchester. So this is a championship game right here. What do you believe is the key to winning on sun, uh, Saturday? Well, here's what I say. Offensively, hold on to the ball. Uh, no turnovers. And uh, we got to have our playmakers step up and make plays. Uh, there's no question about that. Defensively, it's going to come down to uh, tackling uh, and assignment sound football. Uh, you know, and we're going to have to play uh, aggressive football on the defensive side of the ball and then special teams I think we got to continue to, to make plays on special teams because it's been a positive aspect of our program this this season so we just got to continue to do that this may be coach Max third homecoming as a head coach but he's no stranger to homecoming at ship having played here as a student athlete well, it's almost time for kickoff, but before we send you out to Seth Grove Stadium, let's hear who the student media leaders told Bo Wilson who they think would win the game. Shippensburg U student media sports professionals. We welcome Trey Campbell from SUTV, Perry Madden from WSYC, and Ryan Trexler from The Slate. Now, let's get to it. What do each of you think is Shippensburg key to victory? Zach Zulli has got to be the number one key for Shippensburg to pulling out a win here today, guys. Zach Zuli is unreal when he is on fire. However, this season, he's not the Harlan Hill winning quarterback that he looked like last year. 22 touchdowns, it's not bad numbers for him, but he hasn't looked at that same pace and that ability that he is hitting receivers in stride every game this year. Perry, I know you call the games for WSYC. I've seen a lot of errant throws and a lot of misreads from Zuli this year. If he can play to that same level he did last year, and hit his receivers in stride. This offense can put up a lot of points against a very good Westchester defense that only allows about 20 points a game. Yeah, you talk about Zach Zuli being a little errant, and last week was definitely a good example of it. And, you know, some of those errant throws have led to turnovers, and that's my key for the game for Shippensburg is they've got to win the turnover battle against Westchester. Now, Shippensburg, minus 12 on the year that ranks near the bottom of all of Division Two. And you look at Zach Zuli's got to be, you know, the head of that. He already has nine interceptions. He threw ten all of last season. He needs to be more on his uh, game. And, you know, some of the interceptions haven't been all his fault. So, you know, everyone's got to be on their game when it comes to that. And then on the defensive side of the ball, you know, just forcing, it, maybe if it's only one takeaway, it can turn the tide of a game depending on where it comes at. Uh, but Chippensburg, the defense themselves have only forced two, uh, for, forced two turnovers, two interceptions. They need more of that. They need, you know, fumbles and interception somehow. But either way, you know, the offense and the defense together, they got to win that turnover battle. You know, you talk about Zach Zuli, and obviously he's got to play well. And the turnover margin obviously has to start becoming in Chippensburg's favor, but I think they need to really slow down Rondell White. He is just an absolute monster on the field, and they have to find a way to shut him down. He's averaging over 126 yards a game. They really need to find a way to plug up those holes that he's finding, because obviously Westchester does have a good line. They need to find a way to shut him down, and that's their key to victory. 
Re real good points, guys. And now uh, on the other side, what does Westchester have to do to get a win? Well, Trex, you just mentioned it. Rondell White. This guy is unreal. Next to Franklin Quiete, I think he's probably the best back in the PSAC. He has over 1,150 yards rushing already this season, 15 touchdowns on the ground. You mentioned about their line being so good. If Westchester just outpossesses Shippensburg, they score fast, Shippensburg does. So if Westchester holds onto the ball, keeps it out of Zuli and his offense's hands, and goes right down the middle against the interior line where Shippensburg lost players like Saeed Khatib and company, I think Westchester can score points and keep the ball out of the offense's hands and win the game. You talk about time of possession being a big thing, and Shippensburg has had trouble when teams have a lot of time of possession. Um, but you obviously see them at their best, like you talked about with Zuli, when they can go right down the field, quick strike, hitting guys like you know Trevor Harmon, Sheldon Mayer, uh, for you know drives that take less than two minutes. Offensive coordinator Joe Davis loves picking up the pace, and that's where Westchester has got to you know got to keep things under control. And it obviously starts with their pass defense. It's been a little bit suspect. The front seven of, of this defense is outstanding. You got all Americans like Rondell Williams and things like that. But in the back, it's been, uh, you know, hit or miss. That, that's, I mean, a main reason why they almost blew a game to a one and six Kutztown team at Westchester. They've got to be able to slow down Zuli at least a little bit and cover their bases in the back and make sure that Shippensburg has to at least, you know, work for their points. I mean, me, I got to go with the quarterback, you know, for Westchester. He's got to be able to throw the ball. He's got to be able to find those holes in the defense, especially, you know, the back of Shippensburg's defense. They've struggled from time to time. Like you said, you know, the turnover ratio obviously hasn't been there. So what they need to do is, you know, Westchester's really got to use the pass game because if Shippensburg does start to slow down Rondell White, they got to find another way to win. Okay. It's time for the moment of truth. Let us all know who you think will win the game this Saturday and why. Start with Trey again. Well, you know, Mac has only lost to one team at Seth Grove, and coincidentally, it is Westchester. And I think Westchester is going to be able to knock off Shippensburg again. I think if they play the way that I thought they will, which is run heavy and outpossess Shippensburg, they're going to be able to just force a few, not necessarily turnovers, but turnover on downs from Shippensburg. I think they're going to pull out a win here, 42 to 35. Ship's offense is still going to put up the points, but I think Rondell White's going to have a big day. Yeah, you talk about uh, the fact that you know last time, last game that was won here uh, at Seth Grove by an away team was Westchester, and you know it's been now basically two years, and uh, Shippensburg has set a new record, twelve home wins in a row, and I think you know I think that's the you know the biggest key for Shippensburg is that it is here. You know you play in this game at Westchester, and it could be a whole different thing. I'm going to take Shippensburg. I think Shippensburg has finally got their feet underneath them. And, you know, it, it, it was tough. The first two games of the season, now we've seen that those two teams that Chippensburg played are very, very good teams. And you look at Westchester's schedule, they haven't played anyone to the caliber of Slippy Rock or Shepard. Now, Westchester is undefeated, but I don't think they've played the same caliber, caliber of competition that Chippensburg has. Chippensburg has made leaps and bounds in, uh, you know, all, both offensively and defensively. And I think you're going to start to see that chemistry really show on Saturday. And Chippensburg, they seem to have the swagger back that that 2012, yeah, team, 2012 team has. And I think they're going to come out excited, a good start, you know, start to finish kind of game. I think you're going to see it on Saturday, 45-38. I got to go with the defensive side of the ball. You guys are seeing a lot of scoring. I got to say, you know, I think Chippensburg is really going to be able to put together a good 60-minute defensive team. You know, and like you said, Westchester is definitely a beatable team. They went down to the wire with a, a struggling Kutztown team that Chippensburg pretty much handled last week. I got to say 27-21 Raiders. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Can't wait to see how it all turns out. Back to Lance and Lindsay. Well, it's time to get out to Student Association Field at Seth Grove Stadium. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lance Kopp. And I'm Lindsay Barna. Kickoff is right around the corner, and I'll see you on the field. Let's send it up to Trey Kemble and Kyle Toomey in the box, and go Raiders. This is pretty good. <laughs> 